Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShilohRelics.com. I hope you're having a great day. We're having a wonderful one down here and we're gonna to get to talk about something that I love, Civil War history. Every artifact has a story and I feel very fortunate to get to bring those stories to you. I hope that you're enjoying them. I hope that you're sharing them. I hope that you are going on to YouTube and are already subscribed. Remember, when we hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm gonna figure out some way to have a drawing and we're gonna give away an original Civil War Cavalry Sword. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite pattern swords of the Civil War. And this one was for the U.S. Navy. This is the one that has forever been known as the U.S. Model 1860 Naval Cutlass, which is kind of ironic because they weren't talking about them in the government until 1861. There uh, was a letter that was written to James T. Ames on May 18th, 1861 from the government, and they're sending him a French sword that they want to pattern this sword after. So for years, we should have been calling it the 1861, but instead we've called it the 1860, and that's gonna stick because we've got 150 years worth of calling it that. So today we're gonna to talk about the 1860 slash 1861 Naval Cutlass. They made these from uh, June of 61 through December of 64. They were all made of this style at the Ames Manufacturing Company in Chicopee, Massachusetts. Ames used a really cool maker's mark, like you can see here. It's inside of a scroll design. It's got their name. It's got the Chicopee, Massachusetts location. When you flip that blade over, you see this, and this is the 1861 date, which lets us know its first year of production. They made about 22,000 of these uh, during that time. Uh, and as I was reading up to be sure what I tell you is correct, it mentions that you don't see a 65 date, so they did get everything in uh, in that 64 time frame. The blade is very distinctive on these. It's a single edge. It's got a single fuller going down the middle and they don't make it with a secondary fuller. And the fuller is just the groove on each side. Most swords of the day will have a couple of fullers, the wide one and then a small one. This one only has the wide one. And so that's a little different than most of the swords you encounter. What makes them really distinctive and you stand out from a mile away, this one has the huge brass basket handguard like this. And as you can imagine, it didn't take a lot to ding that brass and to dent that brass and to break that brass. So when you see one like this that's really pretty, it helps it. This sword also has the original grip on it. Because of their service, they get a lot of wear. They have a wooden core and on top of that wood, they wrap it in uh, black leather. And this is something that you will hear people disagree about. I don't think they ever had wire on this model. Some of them show up with it, but it looks to me almost every time like it's been put on in more recent times. So when you see one of these without the wire and it doesn't look like it ever had it, it probably didn't. Not to say it couldn't have, for all you guys that like to argue, it could have. The sword has a large brass pommel cap, and if you've been watching, you know that the pommel cap is the brass piece that holds all the sword together. On the front of the guard, where you, your thumb would, would feel comfortable sitting, a lot of times on these you'll see numbers or you'll see letters, and we think that those are for rack numbers, are for possible sold, uh, identification on, on board ship. So we don't know for sure, but that's probably what they're for. If you notice, this sword has a scabbard. Scabbard's a lot rarer on these than it is uh, just the sword itself. And it's because in that first letter, they talk about how they want the scabbards to be riveted instead of sewn. And along the back side of the scabbard, this one has all the rivets. And along the opening, it has the rivets. And when you get down to the bottom of the scabbard, it has a single rivet. 
And that's the rivet that always takes the pressure when somebody drops a sword or it gets hit. And so most of the time that bottom rivet's gone. If you find it, it's more money. It's, it's, and so this one is worth more money because it has it. And uh, at the top of the scabbard, you see this. This is the stud on the scabbard, and that would have went through a piece that hung off the sailor's side. You had the belt, and then you had what's known as a frog. And the frog was just the piece that attached the sword scabbard, it attached the sword scabbard to the sailor's belt. I'll get it here in a minute. It's been a long day, but I don't give up. So we've got the model 1860-1861 naval cutlass. We've got the original grip intact. We've got a pretty brass guard. We've got a vividly clear Ames maker mark. We got an 1861 production date. Could have been anywhere because of that early date. We've got a full length blade. We've got the scabbard that's nice. And we've got an opportunity to buy it. You can go on to Shiloh Relics. You can order this one. Uh, it's on there, I've got lots of pictures of it. I've also got uh, a couple that are out of the scabbard that are less expensive. This one's gonna run you $1,250. And there's a little bit of extra information about this sword and something that I did really neat with it back several years ago that you're gonna have to go on the website and check out to learn about. I've also got a couple of those French ones that they patterned this sword after. And so if you get a chance and get one of those refund checks, you can get both of them and show them the before and the after. I hope that you guys are well. I hope that you're taking care of each other. I hope that if you have someone that is special in your life, when you get home tonight, even if you've had a hard day, look at them and tell them you love them. Because you always want folks that you love to know it. And if the last words you ever hear out of my mouth are I love you, I'm okay with that. I'm proud of it because I mean it when I say it. I hope you guys have a great evening. I love you all and I'll catch you next time.